chat, welcome back to Porthole. This is a segment where I take a look at various ports across video gaming. And some of them are not great, and some of them might be kind of cool. But the ones I have today are probably going to be more limited and maybe not all that amazing. I have um, an NES pack, and I also have an old cell phone pack from like early, early cell phone games. So uh, we can do a little bit of the N64 pack to start. I feel like that would be good. And uh, I have this one's from Vulcan 64. And we can start with 1942. So, I have comparison videos here. So this is 1942. One of many ports by Micronix, a company that was sourced by various arcade developers that didn't have much experience with the NES at the time. Like Capcom, or like, like Capcom. Despite this, they are notorious for their inc incredibly low quality ports, with Athena being considered one of the worst games on the NES. Yes, it was pretty bad. I would include it in this pack, but I think you've already checked it out on another porthole segment. I just have checked that game out a bunch. 1942 is no exception with some of the worst audio on the NES. I had a friend that had this game and he loved it. So. Or was it 1941 that he had? I think it was 41. Okay, so here it is on the NES. Ah, uh, but we were happy back then. 1941 was arcade only, so then it was probably this crap. Oh boy, I need to lower that. Ah, oh. Let's get that audio way down. Okay, so the weird thing about this game is it brings back more memories of my friend than it does of, like, the actual game, because I played it in his garage. Him and his brothers had a TV and an NES set up in a garage, and I went over, I played 1941, and then they also gave me seeds. They gave me corn seeds. <laughs> Or like, it, it, I don't know if it was corn or like some crop. Tomato seeds or something? Anyway, that's besides the point. This is pretty bad. Um, it doesn't sound good at all. When I was a kid, this was like, oh, this is great. You can shoot. But it's pretty boring. Um, you can do a flip. That's kind of neat. Oh, God. By the way, I know the NES had a pretty limited sound chip, but go listen to Mario 2 or 3 and tell me it couldn't do a decent soundtrack. It, it could do a decent soundtrack. This is just shit. That, that is pure, pure ass. And I would like to never see that game again. Chances are I will see it again. This one's... Afterburner. Okay. This seems to be an actual Sega licensed port around late 80s. Sega's home console sales were stagnating, so they allegedly sourced some of their arcade games to various developers to port them to the more popular NES, just so they could turn a quick profit. Sega's arcade games at the time were known for their sophisticated faux 3D graphics based on complex sprite scaling. Something the NES was incapable of. Afterburner demonstrates this perhaps more than any other game. So, that's not the NES, by the way. What you just witnessed, chat, that was the original. So, so that's Afterburner original, like arcade. Alright. So, just keep in mind, for its time, this was pretty impressive to look at in the arcade. Then, unfortunately for us, well, at least the sound won't be as bad as 1942, 
Um, but this is the afterburner port from 1989, I guess. You can tell by the title screen, it already looks amazing. Sorry, music was muted. For good reason, mind you. So, uh... Yeah. How, how about... How about that? Wow, so many frame rates. Oh, this is actually Vomitus. They tried? I Did they, though? Also, at this time, Top Cruise had made Top Gun, so the F-14 was a very, very popular aircraft. Someone said Top Gun is still worse. Well, that was the one that I remember playing as a kid and not being able to land the fucking aircraft. And uh, that game made no sense to me whatsoever as a kid anyway, so I just... I just failed at it over and over and over again. But this one I never played. Um, is there a way to avoid, like, taking damage? This is bottom gun? Yeah, this, this is pretty bad. Oh, if you press start, you can, like, do something. Hang on, what do you- what do you- what do you, oh. If you press start, you can go a little faster, I think? Um, but yeah, there are missiles, you have to avoid them. Um, you can do, like, aileron rolls, and they're terrible. And they- and they actually make my eyes hurt even more. Chat! We are 0 for 2. Because this game is really, really, really hard to look at. Aladdin. This game feels like an unlicensed pirate, but I can assure you this is 100% official port of the, any, uh, the Super Nintendo game. I didn't even know Aladdin was on the NES. Let's see the original. Okay, so this is the Super Nintendo game. This I played, I rented this, and I was very upset when I couldn't use the sword. Which was only in the Sega Genesis version, and I've told that story like seven times on the stream at some point or another. This game was pretty good. It wasn't bad. It was a good rental, and I liked the movie. It's one of the three Disney movies I actually liked, because I, for some reason, was a, a grump about Disney. I liked Looney Tunes much better. But, yeah, um, I liked the movie, I liked the game. So, now, we can see Aladdin on the Nintendo Entertainment System. 1993, eh? Okay, so we can't actually skip this. In Agrabah, a faraway land of wind and sand, a young street rat named Aladdin must steal to survive. While wow, they're doing the story. Well, it's better than that Walking Dead game that just came out. Ooh, this is rough. Wait, you throw apples at them and they explode. Oh wow, you actually get a sword in this one. But who who the fuck is buying Aladdin on the NES in 1993? Dream of the childhood. Yeah, this is finally the dream of the childhood has been realized. Except the game is pretty rough. This is a porthole, all right, chat. The sound chip is trying. It's trying its hardest. 
This is another one of those things where, like, we're talking about impressive games that were made later for a system. Like, I was talking about Portal 64. And, like, you can squeeze a lot of juice out of the, um, NES. Even back in, like, the early 90s, Kirby comes to mind. Actually a really good looking and sounding NES game. But, you know. This one's just very stilted and, uh, ugly. And, uh, it's just... <laughs> Listen, the NES had more colors than just red, yellow, and a couple other shades. There were colorful games on this console. Just throw some explosive apples. Yes, yeah, so you can throw apples or you can use your sword. Um... Yeah... Mexico filter? The Breaking Bad Mexico filter strikes again. Oh god. Oh, that's some really, really piss for platforming. Compare this to, like, original Mario which came out nearly a decade earlier, and it's so much smoother than this. I understand that they were trying to fit, like, a bigger game inside this... <laughs> for the NES, but it just doesn't work. They tried, maybe. Maybe they tried. Oh, I've seen this one. Okay, this next one is Dragon's Lair, chat. So here's the original. This probably doesn't need any further comment. Okay, well... So, Dragon's Lair was a fully animated arcade game that was very popular. Um, as you can tell, it had some pretty amazing animation. There was a lot of personality, a lot of character. And, um, you had to react very quickly to do some of these things. Don Bluth did the animations. It is very unforgiving, and you would die so easily in that game. Anyway. It's, it's QTE the game, yes. Unfortunately, it was ported over to the NES, and I have played this, and it's... Well... Here you go. What you saw, by the way, was actual gameplay from the arcade. Sure, it was animated and it was QTEs, but at least it had charm. Uh. Yep. I just want to say one thing, chat. Yes. Yep. Well, oh, okay, good. I want to say one more thing. What were they thinking? <laughs> yep. Someone said this looks like it has the gameplay flow of chunky yogurt. You know when... It's not just chunky yogurt. It's like... Diarrhea yogurt. Just to channel AVGN... Yet again. Okay. What game is that, chat? Oh, that's, that's Final Fantasy IX. You have lives, too, yeah. Oh, 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 Singing Mountain, Chrono Trigger. Yes, that melody. It was just, like, somewhat in the ballpark of that.
I, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do here, chat. I'm trying to crawl around like a baby, and it's not working. Hit dragon with dagger. I know, but he only... When I crouch down, the dragon... ...goes back to Oh! You cheap fuck! Oh my... Oh my god. I have maybe an idea. I don't know if this is gonna work, chat, but we're gonna try something. You can eat all of the shit that you can possibly stomach. It's not much of the Singing Mountain. Port in the loosest sense. It's funny, you said loosest sense, and I read that as loosest stool. First, um, first screen, by the way. That's how many hits it takes to kill that dragon. Wow, and, and, and a nice bat for you as well. What manner of bullshit await? Oh, insta-death hand. Uh-huh. Insta-death... Oh, that was a snake. That appears I as soon as you get close to it. I should have known that was gonna happen. Um, it really is... It's funny because this is just trial and error of the game, but none of it's fun. Rock to the foot kills you. Just like the arcade game. Yeah, but again, at least the arcade game looked nice. When, you know, you there's a storyline, and you're looking at nice animations. I agree, by the way. I fucking never really wanted to play that game ever when I was in the arcades. I But I liked watching someone else play it. They played this on a sort of recent GCCX and it was brutal. I believe it. Vulcan, you, you had a chat message before about the next game. Can you, um, can you post that again? Ghosts and Goblins is next. It's another Micronics port of a Capcom game. Before you play Ghosts and Goblins, I should let you know that I did the comparison video a bit differently since I love the arcade version. Okay. Wait, Capcom didn't develop Ghosts and Goblins on the NES? I always thought they did. Zombies spawn and move at a very manageable rate. They may occasionally spawn in unexpected spots, but they give you plenty of breathing room. Yeah, they do, actually. Their NES counterparts are far more aggressive and chaotic. Oh, we got a whole ass, like, educational segment here on the stream. I love this. Red or ar ar Aramers are very what? Com I don't know. They can't dodge close range attacks, clear them off usually better getting close to them. 
in the event you can't get close, you could just stay patient and try to anticipate their charge attack. The NES version is CBT. Oh yeah, I, I, that I remember. You have to fight them airborne. Their movements are tougher to deal with in general. Flying knights can be tricky, but aren't too much of a problem. Yeah, they're predictable. NES version gives you almost no room for error. Oh my god. Oh my god! Woody pigs can be quite problematic, but they're manageable with enough patience. Make note of their gener generous hurt boxes. On the NES, they're harder to hit and spawn and attack more suddenly. Micronix was like, well, the game is it's the same. We did a good job. Trick them into dodging your attacks and they'll be prevented from attacking you while jumping predictably. Okay. NES unicorns can't be manipulated as easily, forcing you to deal with their random attack patterns. Defeating one demands a lot of luck. Blue killers can be quite annoying, but they fly in predictable arcs that make them easy to hit. Not shown here, but they're very easy, easy when they swoop in from above. On the NES, they spawn in more suddenly and use more chaotic flight patterns. Wow, no fucking breaks are given to the player in the NES version. Everything sucks so much more. Petite devils can be problematic at times, but you usually have enough time to react to them. Yeah, that doesn't look terrible. That looks, looks doable. On the NES, they appear suddenly and fly in awkward angles. Goblins are dangerous enemies that generally do a good job at guarding ladders. However, you can lure them away from the ladders to give you room to fight them. Manipulating goblins is, goblins is a very important skill as they can otherwise waste a lot of your limited time. Goblins on the NES are less cooperative and more awkward to manipulate. Combined with hard-to-hit crows, they can catch you by surprise. Expect to lose a lot of precious time on this segment. Where'd the music go? It's just gone. This segment's fairly straightforward. While this is a very long level, you should have more than enough time to clear it, provided you've dealt with the goblins well enough. The NES version is more of a mess. Wow, who would have thought? I'm starting to see a pattern. Expect the timer to start running down here if you have bad luck with the previous goblins. Just checking something out here, chat. Oh, the music. Yeah, that was weird. Okay. This is almost done. Video's... Another minute and a half. Bats use random flight patterns, but are usually are not that much serious of a threat. Excuse me. This clip speaks for itself. A rare example of an enemy being more challenging on the arcade version. Fighting tower monsters involves trading shots and having to dodge either a low or high shot, or both at once. Music is so much worse on the NES, too. While they're easier on the NES, they're also more boring and will never pose a threat. <laughs> even though they're easier, they just- they, they suck even more because they're just terrible. And boring.
Again, red ar ramers can be quite complicated, but they don't use RNG, so it's a matter of figuring out a consistent way to attack them. Compare and contrast this particular encounter. Oh my god. This is where my patience with the NES version ends. There's probably still more to talk about, but you get the idea. Yeah. Yeah, you could, you could say we got the idea. That was good, though. I enjoyed that. Um, really informative. Really informative. And it makes me not want to play the game. I'm going to. Full playthrough. Here we go. No, so this I played, I mean, the Super Nintendo version was still hard, but better. Um, and then there was a version on the Switch I played, wasn't there? What happened there? I got stuck on the ground. The Switch version I streamed, and I actually really enjoyed that, and it had some good difficulty options. Immediately take damage. Spawn in. Enemy spawns on you. Oh boy. Well, I enjoyed aspects of it. It was still a little too difficult at times for me, and I got angry, but the sense of accomplishment when you finally defeat a boss or whatever was, was second to none. Get the knife? I don't know where it is. Yeah, there's, there's just... Everything requires some... Some form of, Oh, there's the knife. Some form of, like, very, very quick reaction as well. I remember on Nick Arcade, they used to play this. I think the Super Nintendo version they played. I was like, see how many points you can get, and so many people ate shit so quickly, just like I did. I killed one! I killed a Red Reamer! feel very accomplished. Oh, it's these. Oh, fuck! No, that was my fault. That was my fault. Alright. Well, we spent so much time on the video, I don't think I need to be playing too much of it, because you got a very good comparison. But this one's called Akari Warriors. I have played the uh, NES version of this. But, you know... Micronix is to blame for the previous one, and also this one, Micronix port, this time of an SNK game. The original arcade game featured a unique rotary joystick that you'd turn to aim while moving independently. The NES can't replicate this, and the way they implemented aiming is incredibly awkward. Aiming with a tank is especially horrible. I'll leave you to figure out how it's done. I might not ever get to that. But we'll see. Micronix is quickly becoming one of my favorite developers, chat. Ikari Warriors. There's Red Rambo and Blue Rambo. Where are they now, you think? The uh, Micronix? They just made that Walking Dead game that's, that's going around. It's been a really great year for some licensed garbage. King Kong, Gollum, Walking Dead, really, really fun. Oh yeah, this is, this is pretty awkward. I, 
I listen, I'm gonna defend my chronics here a little bit and say I can understand why this would pose a problem. Oh, I have limited ammo. Oh fuck. Yeah, this this isn't this isn't particularly fun. I think my cousin liked this game. Because in the 80s, the coolest thing that you could ever do was play a game where you start as a shirtless Rambo in a jungle. Very, very important that you get to do that at least a couple times in your life. No, not the club cousin. Never the club cousin. I had no relationship with the club cousin. Almost none. Now, this is the cousin, when I mention... When I, okay. When I mention, um, my cousin, he was nine years older than me. He had a ColecoVision. He had a Commodore 64. And we played video games together. Some of my earliest memories in the world are me watching him play Mario. And then me eventually playing Mario. So, that's that one. This one's called... Karate Champ. While the original arcade game is very dated, it's still much better than the NES port that plays even more awkwardly and doesn't have the charm of the original. For the record, the original game had you perform various attacks by inputting directions on a dual joysticks, which the NES version tries to replicate to some degree. Atari Warriors is probably the hardest NES game you can beat if you don't use the respawn code. Begin. Begin. Ha! Okay, so, so here's the NES version. 1986. Oh my god, yep. Oh yeah, this, this is a legendary one. Look how fun this looks. Why am I facing the wrong way? Just went through the fucking floor? Okay. Yeah, it's really easy to attack the wrong way. Wow. It's a hell of a jump. If you, I think if you press both, both buttons, A and B at the same time, you get to jump. Yep, that's what happens. Boast buttons. <laughs> Someone said, my god, so many of these NES games are so boring. Well, these are not great examples of good NES games. There, there are plenty that are still fun to play. But yeah. Now, keep in mind, chat, when I saw Atari games and, like, Commodore 64 games, I felt like that chat member did. Even when I was, like, six or seven, and I would see the Commodore 64 games, I'd look at them and be like, these are lame! But yeah, that, this game is horrendously boring and uh, very janky. And, you know, we loved it. <laughs> Next is Pac-Land. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> Least favorite Smash level of all time.
Um, included here is a picture of the image from the original arcade cabinet. I can't show it to you, really. Uh, I can a little bit. Jump, run, jump. I mean, you can see the buttons at the very least. It doesn't have very much information. It just says, here's an image from the original arcade cabinet. You'll understand why this is here when you play the game. Regardless, chat, let's, uh, let's check out the NES version of that. I'm sure it's going to be great, right? Namcot. Pac-Land by Namcot. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, chat, I understand now. Do you- okay. You move... right with the A button, and left with the B button, and you jump with any button on the D-pad. Why? So much of the charm is lost, and I think... Honestly, I don't even like the way the original arcade game looks like. I, I know there's some nostalgia for that art style. I think it's kind of hot garbage. And, uh, yeah. That that definitely pisses people off when I say that. And I, I used to say that when Smash was... When I was playing Smash a lot, and Pac-Land would show up. I'd be like, this looks like shit! And people were like, no, but you don't understand! MS Paint beautiful! Beautifield, please don't make fun of this beautiful game. No style, Joe. Like, man, I listen. I like a lot of shit from the 80s and 90s that looked like crap as well, because that's what nostalgia does. This, however, and the specifically the arcade version, I have no nostalgia for. So I will tell you straight up. I think it looks like hot garbage. Anyway, this plays better than it looks, but it's not by much. Um, this is. Pretty standard fare. Weird controls, um, and you just collect cherries, and they tried. Not really, you know, like, again, a lot of these platformers that I grew up with and, and that I love still to this day, like, the Marios of the world. They have, um, a, a fun gameplay feel. This, you just move the guy left and right, and you jump, and, you know, there's a little bit of physics. It's kind of lame. But this is still way better than some of the other games I've played so far tonight, so I'll give it credit where credit's due. It's playable, it's decent, and it doesn't look or sound like complete garbage. It's just kind of... It's alright. It's just okay, I suppose. Now this is interesting. Smash TV is the original twin-stick shooter. Something the NES controller isn't equipped for. So, the port works around this by having you use two D-pads on two controllers at once. It also lets you play with different controls on one controller, but the game was designed with twin sticks in mind. And doing this makes it apparent. The NES also can't handle the massive enemy density of the original, so this version ends up being just less exciting. This was a really, really cool game to see in the arcades and then play like you know, the Genesis version, or there was, there was one... Chat, was there TurboGrafx-16 version of this? No? Yes? There's a Genesis port? Okay. Um, well, anyway. I did play this, and I don't remember why. I maybe... played a port... somewhere. I don't know, maybe it was the Genesis later on in life, but... I liked it a lot. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the two controller trick. In fact, I know I won't be able to, so we'll just take a look at the visuals. Uh, wow, acclaim. One player, one controller. Use D-pad and four buttons. I could rebind everything, but I'm just going to pass on that.
Um... Well... You can lock the shooting. There was some thought put into this. You can... You can lock the shooting in a direction. Um... It's not... Completely terrible. It's not as good as it could be, of course, but it's, you know... It would probably be better with the... Of course it would be better with the two controllers, but yeah. You just kinda... Just move your dude around and you just shoot. And it's got that, like, um... One of the things I liked about it is how subversive it is. It's like... Well, not that it's subversive, necessarily. It is a little bit. It's like a TV show, and you're shooting. And it's all being filmed, and it's just fun! Marathon Man? Yeah, or like, yeah, Running Man. Good luck. You all need it. Wow. Some babes from the 80s with big hair. And, and that's it, just big hair. Okay, so again, my assessment of this is even with one controller, it's not completely terrible. It, it's got merit. It, it's... I, I give them credit for attempting... The gameplay is somewhat smooth. Sure, the enemy density is less, but it's kind of fun. I might have enjoyed this as a kid in the 80s. So, I don't know where, where the music went just now. Have you played the Super Nintendo version? I might have. I don't know, I don't know where the music went. It just kind of died. All right. It's weird. One more game for the NES pack, and then we can move over to the cell phone stuff. Is Space Harrier. This is another one I have played. Welcome to the Fantasy Zone. Get I ready. I don't know if I played the NES version. I probably did. Another 3D Sega game ported onto the NES. Aside from the serious depth issues, this version just feels much slower than the original. So this is another very impressive game for its time. Yeah, you're just a dude. You run. You jump. You fly. You shoot. And then, they made an NES version. Nineteen eighty-eight. Yeah. Well... Well... You know... That's... Yeah, it's about what I expected. I wonder if someone, like, really good at Nintendo game making in the year of our Lord 2023 could go back and make a game like this and have it run smoother and be better. Honey, I got you Space Harry for Christmas. Oh, Ma, I love Space Harry! Oh, I love that game in the arcade! Yes, that is at least less vomit-inducing than the, um, Afterburner game. So there's at least that. So thank you, Vulcan64, for making that. And I'm going to combine that porthole with this porthole because there's only like nine games here. And uh, I think we could probably go through them somewhat quickly. Oh, God. Chat, hang on. Uh, that frog game was still running for some reason. Fucking changed my monitor's refresh rate. 
Weird. All right. Um, I think it's gone now. So in order to do this, I had to um, download an Android, if you know what I mean. Uh, Nox, it's called, which is not the best, but it's, there's not a whole lot of options. Then I also had to get J2ME player or JT, uh, J2ME loader. So this pack is by chic dead 26 all right so uh we'll start with the bad ones mega man 2 oh boy all right so this is mega man 2 oh mysterio de dr wiley and it says here Awful physics, awful soundtrack, levels got severely crunched, bosses are dumb as hell. This was my first experience with Mega Man 2. Thankfully, it wasn't my first Mega Man game. I recommend beating Bubble Man's stage. It's short, painful, and you can easily tell that something is wrong. Okay. Couldn't find it in any other language. Alright, so be it. Oh yeah, expect amazing audio. That's just what this is capable of. And that that's how just it sounds. So I don't know what year this was, though, but I, this is like old cell phone games, like before touchscreen. Modo Historia. It, um, oh boy. Wait, that's Airman. Oh fuck. Pronto. Oh, this is this is this is really, really, really fucking bad. I'm gonna try Bubble Man stage, but I need to die a couple more times. This feels like a bootleg. Apparently it's Apparently it's real. Oh wait, there's a level select after you die, I think. Flashman? Chat, am I stupid? Where's Bubble Man? Oh man. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I am a fake fan. I, I should know this. I had Mega Man 4 growing up. Oh, here's a cool thing. You lose momentum because... Oh, wait, you know what it is? I think it's a button press issue with key binds. I can only hit one button at a time, chat. Wait. Oh, wait, no, no, no. That's weird. I don't know why that happened. Can't tell if emulation issue or this thing is just genuinely garbage. Could be both. It could just be both. I can't even get over there. Come on, kill me! There, um, you have to press nine or seven for diagonal jumps. Think about how this played on a flip phone with the plus pad you use to navigate menus. That is actually a disturbing, a disturbing thought chat. I don't think I want to actually beat Bubble Man stage. Like I'm, like I said, I'm having issues with the the controls and the jumping and shit. So. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. I'll try, you know what, I'll try. Oh. oh. Dear God. Oh my God.
Did they know? I mean, clearly they had to know. Maybe they were just so limited by the technology that this was like... They were like, alright, this is good enough. It's Java. It's Mega Man a little bit. I feel like Mega Man has gotten, like, fucked over with a lot of his ports. Do you remember the MS-DOS Mega Man I played? Yeah. I don't know which is worse. No, this is worse. This is worse. Exciting level. I'm actually surprised that this mid-boss is even in the game. I'm kind of blown away by that. Why the reverb? I, I, it's more fun. Reverb means big. Wait, that was the whole stage? Wow, that was the whole stage. Okay. Yeah, we, we have some serious problems here. I think I could still defeat Bubble Man, but I, it's possible. Maybe? I don't know, I'm kind of struggling now a little bit. But, uh... It's the jumping. Not being able to jump and move at the same time, like I said before. Oh god, one health, really? Really, Bubble Man? It's okay, you have infinite continues. You can just continue our... Wait a minute, chat. Wait, chat. Oh, I thought... Wait, 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 chat, I think... Wait. There's a sweet spot. You could just stand and not take any damage. Clearly, I haven't found it. I had it once. We hear Woodman stage. Okay. We got bubble lead. <laughs> Why is it so loud? Oh man, Mega Man, I'm so sorry. Oh god, the menu resets the music. Yeah, they didn't give a single fuck about this port. That's rough. That is rough. Okay. Now, this next one is called Turok. A version of the commercially successful Turok 2008 reboot. It has weird graphics with funny looking characters. I recommend letting the first dino approach you because you can punch it and it looks great. You got it. You got it.
Enable sound. Yes. Start new. I still can't believe this This is what happened to the Turok series. It, it was just a victim of, of the times, I suppose. Simpsons shafted? Maybe. But you know I'll do it next week if it's shafted today. Sorry. I didn't expect to get hung up on that frog game for so long. That's better. Is there, like, supposed to be music? This is pretty late in flip phones. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm going to be playing Turok 3, the, the remake on the 30th, so I'm excited for that, but this is just... This is foul. Slept well, Turok. Commander is giving this briefing now. Better hurry. Necklace. Mus muscle butt marine men. That all look the same. <laughs> 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 Alright, listen up. We'll be touching down soon, so I'm only gonna say this once. We have to fight and neutralize this man, Roland Kane. War criminal, highly trained. This, by the way, Turok, the original series was your comic book character named Turok, right? Joshua Fireseed or Talset. And you are, you have a bow and arrow and you have guns and you fight dinosaurs and mystical creatures and rock monsters and like barbarians. And you, it's all like magic and weaponry and weirdness and it's great. And aliens. And now it's just war criminal, highly trained, very dangerous. Turok here used to serve under his command. He knows Kane and his tactics. He will help us track him down. What the? What's happening? They're shooting at us. We're going down. It's just one of the, the few... I just really wish this didn't turn into Space Marines, the series. But whatever. At least we get Turok 3 soon. I'm trying to figure out how to fucking play the game, and I'm kind of struggling a little bit. Okay, I, I need to apparently punch the first dinosaur. No? Okay. Dog tags? The music is just really low. There's, there's some music a little bit what the a dinosaur I'd better hide press 8 to hide that was close wait I think I was supposed to punch the dinosaur in the face I fucked up I blew it chat I blew it no, it's okay. There's another one. <laughs> oh. Oh, man. He's dead. Dob. Dob, it's me. Turok. Press 5 to repeatedly kill the raptor. Chat. Can someone turn this into a GIF for the internet? I think it, it it's necessary. I don't even need it. You can't make an emote out of that. But just to have, like, online in some capacity, that, that needs to... We, we have to preserve that. That's very important. Okay. Next is The Witcher. Believe it or not. The Witcher Crimson. 
something. Crimson Tail. Technically not a port, just a spin-off. Normally I defend J2ME with claws and teeth, but this sucks so bad that even as a bored child I couldn't bring myself to play past the first level. Huh, Atari. Do you want sound? I love sound. You are Geralt, a witcher, one of the elite cast of monster slayers raised and taught for that sole purpose. Your training is now over. It's time to prove your skill. The beast is terrorizing the population. This is just his normal pose. Yeah, you just kick a dude in the face, it's fine. Uh, it's not as bad as Turok, at least, I think. And Mega Man, this is it's so far the least bad, just from a, like, control standpoint. So that's got to count for something, right? Uh, it's very herky-jerky, though. Give him healing herbs. And also, Geralt just always... Like, ball spread. Just full ball spreaded. And that was it. We ran out of music. Sorry, the, the Witcher game, we can't, we can't get you any more music than that. Cast a magic sign. I, sorry, I don't think I have enough buttons bound for that. Eh, you get the idea. The music just stopped, but that's fine. Um, we'll we'll go towards good games, chat. We'll 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 work towards good because right now we're in the bad game category here, and and there's only a couple games. There's, there's just six more, but um, next is boring. Great ports, but not much to point out. Throwing them in in case you need more content. Oh, well, we could check them out for a minute. This is Activision Anthology. Let's see how boring they are. Says they're boring, includes them anyway. Dies. Refuses to elaborate. Anthology Pitfall. Listen, even if the games themselves are boring, whatever, I'm just so tickled by the music. Um... I can't actually jump. Like, it, it, I could jump, but not anywhere else. Uh, Pitfall, there's Hero. Okay, so there's just a lot of old arcade games and, like, you know, Atari shit. Uh... I don't, I don't know. Chat, I don't know what that is. Uh, Hero, so there's, yes. There's also River Raid. It's three games, that's it. It's just those three. This one's pretty straightforward. They gave them new music, but it sounds like sh such garbage anyway. What does it matter? <laughs> It 
It's just like, this song could be the best song in the world, but hearing it, it's probably just the emulation. It was probably better on the phone, right? J2 ME Loader probably does not know how to emulate music. Oh boy, that was fun. Oh, I had so much fun playing that game. <laughs> Heck, Mancha? Yeah, it's, but I, I mean, listen, for its time, I respect it because you're giving a collection for phone flip phones, chat. Those were in and of themselves like a miracle. So, you know, getting like some games that maybe you grew up with and you can play with your, uh, your buttons that you dial people with kind of a small miracle. Alright, this is pretty legit. It looks nice. There, there's some work put into this. Um, but you have to choose music or sound effects. I chose music. It's like... So much of the level's just dark. You go real fast. Um, but yeah, seeing seeing Pac-Man like skid around at fast speeds is, is kind of fun. Uh, I like the the lighting. Again, pretty good for. Pretty good for cell phone. Otherwise, yeah, just more, just Pac-Man. I mean, a lot of these games are going to be the most basic versions possible, but it is interesting to see them ported over to a Java-based flip phone and uh, and actually work. It's nice, like Bubble Bobble chat. Why do... wasn't this music like a meme in, in some form? I can't remember why. Um, it's, it's definitely more playable than some of the other games. And it is Bubble Bobble. It's nice, it's Bubbles, and it's Bobble. Yeah. Thorn? Got it? What does that mean, Dave? Java was very, very bad at sound, says a chat member. Yeah. Part of me was wondering if it was the emulation, but... Read Thorn's message. Holy fucking shit, goddamn this annoying fucking song. Oh. Wait. What was that? Was the message? That's the meme. From what, though? Was it from a show or a YouTube video or something? What was it from? YouTube. Okay, someone did lyrics to the... Okay, I gotcha. I probably saw that and forgot about it. Alright, chat. Now, I can show you... some good ones. There's actually some good Java games, and uh, one of them is Worms 2010. So it's smaller than expected, but it's Worms. So I didn't really have very many games on my flip phone. I don't, I don't think I had... I couldn't even fucking tell you which games I had, chat, but I was never a big phone game person. Even in the early days. Shaolin Ants tutorial. Um. 
I'll just do quick play. No worms don't crouch. Ho ho. Brandon. Chunk. Hi hi. Data. Ha ha. Mikey. Hi ha ho. Okay. Did he have the shape of an L on his forehead? Oh man, sure you can. Okay, now how how does one go into one's worm bag? Get the map there. There's binoculars. Maybe L? Yeah, L is the worm bag. Okay. Oop, I keep I tried to click. Let us click. Yeah. Oh, eat shit. Oh, man. Not bad. This is a pretty good worms. Um, well, it's basic as fuck, but that's okay. I could have spent time playing this and enjoying it. Back in the day. Yeah. I want to just let those worms get into the water and then I'm going to stop playing this. But um yeah, it's not bad. It's it's actually pretty impressive. I I like it. Um is there a jump function? I don't know if there's these worms can jump. That makes me upset. I was hoping I could get the wormies to jump. Perfect grenade. Perfect grenade. That was a terrible grenade. That was a fucking awful grenade. Who up playing with they worm? One in the morning playing with worm. Chat. It's okay. A little bit of worm. Worm playing with never hurt no one. Unless you, unless, oh fuck, I pressed the wrong button. That was when I played with the worm too much and then it, it actually hurt me because I pressed the wrong button. You'll go blind? Just eat a lot of carrots to offset that. You just have to like, okay, if you're going to play with your worm, just like eat carrots while playing with said worm. Just constantly, constantly chomping on carrots. All right, that was enough. We don't need any more worms. You get it. You get it. It's good. Um, Assassin's Creed? Assassin's Creed 3. Completely different game, of course. It's a side-scroller filled with quick-time events, as AC does. Doesn't fail to deliver. It's a J2ME game loft game. Available on PS3 and Xbox. 2012. This seems like a pretty late addition to uh, this type of phone. Do you want sound? Yes. Too late to get the sound off? 
Oh, right. Assassin's Creed 3 was this one. I don't have the 8 button bound, so I have to actually click it. Um, you know what, chat? The controls are a little sluggish. But... Oh, yep, that's diagonal. Um, I say sluggish, like, it might just be the emulation. It could be. Um, but it's, yeah, it's... Pretty decent. Again, you have to remember what this was being played on and, and the, you know, the limitations. But, um... There's so many games that I grew up, like, during the N64 PS1 era that would get, like, a Game Boy or Game Boy Advance at the time, you know, when the GameCube came out version. And it would be like, yeah, Turok would be a side-scroller. Like, there was a James Bond game that was like Zelda. So, with the limitations of handhelds, you had to, like, take games that were these big, open 3D games, and you had to, you know, do something different with them. Many times, it didn't work out. I mean, there was a Banjo-Kazooie game on the Game Boy Color, I think, or Game Boy Advance, and it, I don't remember it being good or whatever, but, it, you know, it was, like, top-down, and you could, like, run around and stuff. Uh, Tony Hawk on the GBA, there was a, it was, like, a top-down skating game with some 3D elements, and it wasn't terrible. So I think in the hands of a good developer, you can take an IP and you can put it into a less powerful container, and it can still be good, and it can actually be in addition to the series. Or you can do what Capcom did for Mega Man, <laughs> and just have someone port it over that had no conception of what a Mega Man game should play like. And finally, Line Rider. Um, but yeah, the, obviously the audio is very painful, but uh, that's what that's what we have to deal with. You could go the Super Monkey Ball route, yeah, which is just a try to make it 3D. Um, they did that with Medal of Honor. I, I did a segment on uh, G what was it GBA games that were like 3D or like first person shooters on the GBA. Or not GB on the uh, yeah the GBA and and a lot of them were really really hard to look at and that Medal of Honor game was horrendous. So Line Rider, I have no idea how a Flash game for as good as it is got a J two M E port, let alone one of this quality. It's perfectly playable, but I don't believe this is the best way to play Line Rider. Yeah. Probably not. How do you... Huh. Oh. Oh boy. Well. Yeah. So it's, 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 yep, this is definitely not how I'd want to be playing this. Uh, there's also a couple other tools up there. I'm trying to see what, uh, get to the tools. Uh, is there's music? Okay, good. I'd like music, please. Never mind. Press, press the hash key. Oh. Fresh. Oh, look at that, chat. It actually did the thing. That's kind of cool, actually. I, I think 
that's a surprisingly clever way to make tracks a little smoother. Um, finish line acceleration. I'm actually very impressed so far. Um, not, again, yeah, not something I'd want to spend time with these days, but considering, God, you know, I was like commuting to work on a bus the time this was released. So yeah, I probably would have enjoyed this just to make my own levels. Wow. Wow. Mental. Kind of fucked up a little bit, Chad. It's all right. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Just, just gonna die. <laughs> Infinitely die. The music is kind of fun. You should totally play Line Rider Wii game. It has a story mode. I wouldn't be opposed to uh, playing some Line Rider Wii along with some other surprising Wii games. If anyone has a little patience to make a pack for me for a Sunday stream, I'd do it. Someone just said, this is me in life. I, I just like watching this poor chap suffer. Perfect for a Christmas pack. Oh, please, I would love that. Some kind of Wii Christmas pack would be great. Someone said, when is Simpsons? I'm sorry to say, I, I don't think I have the, um, the patience for the, the Simpsons now. I, I think it's a little too late. But... But... Not just patience, I mean, I'm, I'm just tired. I'm sorry, chat. Um, there's an unrelated extra here. It says, sorry. I, I don't know if I want to show this, but... Michael, you can't beat your wife! Of course I can! I have a five million power... What? Michael, you can't beat your wife! Of course I can! I have over five million power... No fucking way! No fucking way! Get out of here, that's not real. Thank you for watching Porthole, everybody. Um, this is an informative segment. And I think we learned a little bit about a lot. And uh, it's always good to see developers hastily put together some garbage port. And sometimes good ones, too. So, very good. If anyone would like to uh, submit porthole suggestions like Vulcan did and Sheik did, feel free. Email me. Um, all you have to do is go to vinesauce.email and uh, just put together some information, put together some stuff. If you want, you don't have to. Obviously, this is always very appreciated, and I know the viewers appreciate it, and I do too. If it's something that you think would be fun to do on your free time, go for it, and it'll, it might be on stream one day. Um, no, don't send hole, port hole. Same for the Wii stuff. Yes, if anyone has any Sunday stream ideas in general, it's vinesauce.email. That's the, not the email address. That's the web page to go to for the contact form. Um, but yeah, thank you, everybody. So I am, I started a little early tonight and, um, we've gone four hours, almost four at 40 and I'm going to get going a little bit earlier because there's no way I could do justice to the Simpsons game. It would end up being me showing it for about 20 minutes and then, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. It seems like it's worth more than that because it has custom uh, cutscenes, Hank Hill is in it, and various other characters, and it looks to be really, really well done. So I'd rather save that for next week, and I think it will be fun to check out. So, uh, what time is your stream tomorrow? I believe 8 p.m. Eastern for the um, that game 
what's it called? Lethal Company with Germ. So uh, stop by tomorrow around that time. And then also um, probably after that, I might do some Mario RPG if we don't play the whole game or play the whole night. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, good night, everybody. See you, uh, see you tomorrow. And if, you know, if you want, come back next week for Simpson. Later. Wow. 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 There's a name was carrying, I don't know, about eight Oreos. There's a name was carrying, I don't know, about eight Oreos in you know stack i'd hand him his weapon i'd say peter safety's off and he wouldn't take the pistol and he says robo wants an oreo and i looked at him and go no it's just you and i peter robo doesn't get an oreo if peter wants an oreo peter can have an oreo and he clip clops in the suit over to the edge of the railing and peter starts bellowing robo wants an oreo and when the steel mill just echoes, Randy has Oreos or Robo wants an Oreo. And Steve Lim over the radio goes, um, Randy, do you have Oreos? So I stuffed that whole stack in my mouth and then crunched them and let them fall down three stories onto everybody below me. And I, not anymore. And Robo got upset. I haven't got a damn clue about Randy Moore and his fucking Oreos.